clock on wall says it's three o'clock, so let's get the meeting started. I'd like to have a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Everybody stand, please. You want to lead us, uh, Rob, since you're right in front of the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Do any of the members have any conflicts of interest with any of the participants here today? I guess not. We'll move on then. Are there any additions? Have everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting? Any additions or corrections? If none, I'll uh, accept the motion that uh, we approve the minutes as submitted. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, our first applicant today is Jack Westfall, who was, was with us last time. Jack, you want to step up to the docket? Have you got anything new for us today? I submitted uh, what Pat requested, a survey and a plan, architectural plan to scale, um, which is what you'd requested, and like to thank you for having me back. Okay. Steve, do you have anything that you'd like to comment about this? Thank you. So at the last meeting, um, the board had decided to table this item until this meeting, until Mr. Westfall had a plan together and a, uh, a survey that kind of indicated uh, how close the, the property, uh, the deck was going to be to the property lines. Um, the survey indicates that the um, south side of the deck which is the front of the property facing Bluff Avenue is gonna be 11 feet from the property line. And to the west side, which is North 11th Street is 4.8 feet from the property line. So um, we had asked Mr. Westfall uh, some questions in terms of deck design. You can see that the deck design is definitely a, a pretty basic uh, design couple questions you know that staff had as we looked at this a bit more was all along kind of uh, and you have some pictures in your packets or whatever along kind of uh, as you go east um, hey guys you're muted I can't hear you we'll, we'll see what we can do Keely to, to uh, correct that and let me know by chance if you can hear this can't hear you. All right, so I'm going to continue on, and I'll expect that when Keely can hear me, she'll say so. Um, so one of the things that we are taking a look at is there's quite a few front porches up and down uh, Bluff as can well. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. at home um, so anyways uh, the, the only question that staff had regarding this matter was you know we're looking at the the 11th Street side we're looking at the front side and a lot of the houses in that area have a number of front porches I think the applicant indicated last time that there was some reason that the upstairs tenant couldn't get down or, or you'll have to explain that again but it just seems like there's an ability to to do a nice and attractive uh, front you know porch like that matches kind of like everyone else's but that's the only comment staff would have with regards to this so I can answer any questions from uh, um, the the board or from if you want the applicant to explain anything further Ed, do you have any questions I do not Rob is there a skirting plan for the deck plan um, yeah, lattice work. I don't know if that showed up on 
the perspective drawing I had to go to Menards to do and uh, not all that computer literate in Menards. <laughs> like it showed a patio door. But yes, door. there would be skirting, you're saying. I, yeah, I can try yeah. to see it. questions no as far as the plans themselves that you have before you I think there's some information possibly on the back of that page too and I don't think they list any information about skirting Richard you got any questions no anyone want to make a motion to, to approve this or just approve it yes sir up at the last meeting that staff didn't really want to have just regular two by two wood spindles we were hoping for maybe a more decorative type railing that's going on there yeah I, I see that the two by twos are already there to, in the drawings on, also show on the two drawing. by twos yeah well um, I how, think a different plan of attack for the railing would be better okay it, any suggest I recommended putting you know lap siding on um, but one of the members didn't like that and, you know, so I was shooting in the dark. I, I can change that readily. I guess that would be up to the board if they have any ideas or whatever they would like to see. I just don't think the two by two spindles is, is nice looking for a front porch. That's all. You're going to see it from 11th. You're going to see it from Bluff Avenue. recommend well they, they make some very nice plastic decorative type railings that uh, aren't gonna treat out turn gray um, they make some nice caps that you could put on the top um, there's all different kinds of options that aren't just wood wood spindles <coughs> would you be taking care of this uh, as he's Starts to build us, somebody's gonna be inspecting us? That would be me. <laughs> now, yeah. I guess, I don't know, you know, with Steve, I guess if, uh, if you guys would be comfortable with it, that, you know, he could present something to Steve and myself for approval. I'm just throwing something out there. But it can't be just two by two spindles. You gentlemen in honor of any? Part of our discussion last month was whether or not it would get painted and the concept of waiting a year to paint it came up and at this point we don't know whether he's going to paint this or not or intends to paint it but I think we're kind of in the same position we were last month as we really don't know what he wants and therefore how do you respond without this long list of this is what we want so here we are again. Yeah, my, and, and my comment would be is you have what they've presented. So from that perspective, um, you know, I, when when Pat mentions that, when we I mentioned that, you know, there is a design element that we believe that Mr. Westfall is in, uh, meeting as part of this with its present proposal. Um, you know, it's all just treated lumber. Um, whether or not something's stained, if there's conditions, we could always put a condition that he paints or stains or something like that if, if the board would choose to elect to approve this. Um, you know, the other option, not saying this is, you know, what needs to be done is uh, that it gets denied and something else is brought in. Um, but those are kind of the options. You have what Mr. Westfall is presenting to you. Um, and, and if anything, we could always condition painting, staining, things of that nature if necessary. Could I uh, have a motion brought forward to either approve it or disapprove this application? Rob? I would make a motion to approve the proposed location of the deck subject to a better facade or look from the street that can be defined and presented to the building inspection department if necessary to come back to us, but I approve the location of it and the concept of it, or I would 
suggest that we do, but with the caveat again that it's got to look better than what's proposed. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Don, you seconded? Okay, thank you. Could we have a little, anybody got discussion? Yeah, if Steve. you don't mind. Um, so, so maybe what we could do is approve the location, like you said, and just uh, with the condition that the applicant works with staff regarding the design of the deck, and if the staff has any concerns, we could bring that back to the board. Yes. You have any discussion on that, Ed? Is there any more discussion? Then I'll call a question. Is this to approve it with the uh, subject to the, uh, all those in favor of approving the application? Signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Welcome, Keeley. Hi, guys. So, Mr. Westfall, you received the approval for the location of the deck, but then you'll just need to work with Pat and I on a little bit with regards to the design. So, what we're saying is the deck location got approved, but just the plain kind of wood deck, we're going to have to kind of, if you have some ideas or concepts in us, we can uh, talk to you about that to get that going. Uh, good. Yeah, I'll just bring in. Sounds good. Yeah. What, Pat and I can speak to you on that then. Okay. Good. Well, understood Thank there, young man? Pardon? Uh, understood? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Next one up to bat is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Davis. You want to put an addition on the garage? Could you step up to the podium, please? Hello. I'm Eddie Davis. My wife is not here today, but we re recently purchased a home on Huron Avenue, and we're looking to make an addition to the garage. I think you have drawings in front of you. Could you speak into the microphone, please? Sure. So we're looking to expand the garage of the home that we just purchased on Huron Avenue. Currently, we have a two-car garage. You're on a corner there. We're on a corner. Are you going to go towards the east? Is that what you're talking about? We're going towards the east, correct. So we You've got enough room to do that? Do you have a survey of the property that you're going to, we don't know how far the lot line you're going to be? We do have a survey. I don't have it with me today. They didn't ask me to bring it, but I can certainly provide it. I have plans that show we're essentially doubling the size of the garage, and the idea behind that is to keep all of our cars, vehicles, um, bicycles, and everything out of the garage, or I'm sorry, out of the driveway area. We're also going to be on a separate permit, hopefully applying and getting approved for correcting the driveway. Right now we have an old driveway that's just full of cracks and it's buckled. And so we're looking to just improve the property. Um, and the plans show that what we're going to do is not just going to add a wooden addition to it. We're gonna keep it looking the same. It'll be the same type brick. It'll be with the same window spacing and the same ridge line for the roof. Um, and we just think it will improve the property and keep things off the street in terms of vehicles. Um, we've got some trees that are overgrown that we would like to remove from the driveway area and just make it look a little bit better. So you're not really going to tear the garage on, you're just going to put an addition to it to the rear. Right, so we're going to pour a slab behind what's existing and then continue that brick line on the north and the south side and then go to the east and then end it there. So it'll be essentially double the size of what it is now. There's some plans on the TV too. Steve, do you have anything? Yeah, a uh, couple comments with this. Sure. Um, uh, the like you mentioned, the, the Mr. Davis. I think one of the key things is going to be just the the survey to see where we're at because I think there's um, um, we have a five foot setback to the alley, and I'm not sure the existing building is five feet from the alley. So that survey is going to be key because we haven't uh, addressed that particular issue. Okay. The other, the other item on this is that this uh, total garage square footage is 1,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, the maximum size garage typically is 1,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So 1,500 square feet is, you know, quite a bit over uh, almost uh, uh, 500 square feet larger than what we permit. Oftentimes a four car garage is uh, 
uh, 827 square feet, and we allow up to 1,000 square feet, so it's a large building. So staff does have concerns based on that of the size. The, the one thing the applicant is doing is trying to tie in the design with the existing, um, you know, from that perspective, uh, uh, design-wise, uh, it's, it's a nice looking structure, but we would have to check that setback and we, you know, and, and like I said, typically the maximum is a thousand square feet. So, so this is uh, not just an easy one for staff to say, hey, yeah, we should do this. Um, the, uh, you know, hardships, I'm not sure what that is in this particular instance, but um, anyways, those would be staff's comments. Is there anything else you want to comment on? No. So the survey would help tremendously. Because I think right now what we're looking at is the survey shows that the uh, footprint of the garage is smaller than the footprint of the house. Um, I know there was a concern about um, where would the water go from a roof line like that. Uh, there has to be consideration for that. So I can provide the survey. Um, right, right. Because one of the things is, is um, if by chance, not saying this, uh, going to get approved or denied, but if that survey is uh, shows that the building's closer than five feet, then this matter would have to come back because we're just taking a look at square footage. We don't know, we don't have any idea where, you know, on that lot it's located. So if it meets it, it would be fine. But if it's too close, then we'd have to come back and, and uh, announce that variance as well. Okay. I know, um, so I can provide the survey that's easy. It's already been done. Um, sure. I didn't bring it with me today. I didn't think I needed it. But I know that the garage where it meets the alley, uh, there's a retaining wall. Yeah. It's not five feet, but I'm not sure where the easement actually is. I mean, that'll show yeah. on the survey. Yeah, uh, I was over there and it looked, what, about three feet to that wall, maybe? It's close. Yeah. It is, and I, it's been there. So we have the original blueprints from 1921, so gotcha. that it's it's old. Yeah, so um, it's an attractive building. So I don't know if it would help to bring those as well, but we can certainly provide the survey. Sounds good. Pat, do you have any questions? <clears throat> Rob, Don, Richard, any comments? Yes. How many vehicles are you going to put in here? So we have three um, cars. We're about to, um, uh, my wife's mother's about to move in with us. She has a vehicle, so it'll be four. We've got two motorcycles. Um, we've got you know, four bicycles. <laughs> yard stuff, snowblower, lawnmower. So um, what we're looking to do is keep the cars out of the driveway, off the street, in the garage, covered um, for a very, you know, a number of reasons. I mean, it, it looks better. Um, there's more space on the road. So it will definitely be space that is well used. Okay, thank you. Um, there was one item that the board should be aware of. Uh, a gentleman at 232 Huron Avenue, a John Farley. Um, this is not the neighbor directly to the east. This is two doors down to the east. Um, indicated that they are unable to change their schedule to be at the meeting today. Um, they had a couple of comments, and those are as follows. First, we have uh, building code and zoning ordinances for a reason. They should be enforced and followed unless the situation makes them following them unsafe or impractical. Ordinances should not be varied simply because property owner wants to deviate, as is the present case. Second, although I have not seen the construction or blueprints, it's not difficult to envision an addition of 26 by 27 would be a complete eyesore on the property. As a side note, prior to building our house, I reviewed our building plans and blueprints, which were 100% compliant with all ordinances with our neighbors across the street and next door and received their approval before proceeding with the project. Um, third, the only way this proposed deviation should, uh, could even be considered is if the architectural structure and external building materials match the existing house, house and garage unmatched roof lines and materials would be an aesthetic disaster. In summary, I'm against the variance and I hope the zone board enforce the existing ordinance. So I can comment on the uh, last one. Obviously you see the plans before you that do show that the whole, uh, that the garage is to be constructed 
uh, in a similar fashion to the existing building in terms of building look, materials, and design. Um, they are coming here, obviously, because it's a little bit bigger, um, and that's, you know, that's the reason why they're here today was to propose that. So I uh, just wanted to make sure the board was aware of that letter from Mr. Farley. So to honor, correct my thinking, uh, clarify my thinking, actually, we're looking for a survey on this to uh, see how it really hits onto the lot lines also. Yeah, I mean, what, what it comes down to, we'll, we'll need a survey, but it, there's uh, the board, whether <laughs> we make a decision to approve or deny, um, if it's denied, it doesn't matter. If it's approved, then Mr. Davis would submit that survey. We mm -hmm. would verify what that setback is. And if it doesn't meet the five foot, then we'd have to come back to the board to have the board uh, consider that variance as well. So one of the big items here is uh, we're 500 square feet over what's existing and what's allowed. 1,000 1, square feet is allowed and 1,512 is proposed. And I can't remember, was it, it's a two car, I think right now, probably about 600, it's, it's somewhere in that car, range. It's, I, I, it's there, like I know there was 20, somewhere. 26. Uh, yeah, I don't have my, it. I think that was about, probably about 650 somewhere, maybe a little bigger. I think your new one's at eight something, yep, so, so it so must be close to that. 28 um, by 27. Yes. Whatever that math is. Yeah, and I think um, I think we are going eight, uh, I think it was like an 800 square foot addition. Or, so it must be right around 800. So what we really want to see is the survey as it shows how it's laid out with the, the house and then going back towards the alley. Um, and then of course the setback from easement is going to be hard to change because the original garage is there. And right. And if, if you have recommendations for, I guess, um, the retaining wall, if that needs to be short up if it needs to be um, redone because it's probably about as old as the garage. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I think I think if something was approved, then um, I would imagine the contractor will work with inspection on that aspect. They would have to, for sure. Yeah. Just a quick question, Ed. How long have you lived there? So we just moved from Houston. Um, so we just bought the home. Uh, my wife is from Sheboygan. She was born and raised here. Her mom is here, her dad is here. So we have got two young kids. And so we were looking at, as time went by, the kids were getting older, a better environment for, for them, for the family. So we looked, we've looked. we been looking for a year. And that was the house that we found. It had its quirks. Um, air conditioning was one of them, it doesn't have it. So we're working on that. Um, so we're doing a lot of other things to the house, but um, just needing some space for the garage. But it was just a move back from my wife. She's really happy. <laughs> So, um, welcome. Weather's better. Rob. Oops. How far from the east property line will the new east wall be? If I had to, um, I would have to guess because the survey shows that, but we've got, I would say, at least 20 feet from the east property. And so there is an existing fence there. So there's a fence that is um, going between our garage now and the house to the east that uh, we would replace, of course, because it's an older fence and there's no point in keeping that. So as the construction will go along, those are the improvements that we would make. Um, but we're not going all the way to our property line by any stretch. Um, we've got, I would say, a good 20 feet to the east uh, property line. When the when the new addition is done, there is going to be 20 feet left, you're saying? I would guess that, but I'd, I'd have to look at the survey. So I'll have to submit the survey um, to the committee so they can look at it. Um, but it's it's not right on top of the fence line or the property line. I could comment a little bit on that. Pat, what do you think? We were thinking it was at least probably around 10. It was gonna be close to 10, was somewhere, 10? somewhere okay. in that area. And just so everyone knows, along that east property line, the um, uh, minimum setback is three feet. So it only has to be three feet along that property line. I apologize for that math then. <laughs> no, no. But there's also an old structure that's like an old playhouse that would be removed. So that corner would be kind of cleaned up. I mean, that's where the fence goes from where the garage is now to that east side and then comes south um, to the neighbor's house. Yes. <clears throat> 
I'll entertain a motion from somebody. I uh... make a motion to deny at this point. Second. Any discussion on that? I'll call a question. A motion is made and seconded to deny. All in favor say aye. Aye. Richard, okay. Anybody else? Motion is defeated. Now, you got to ask who's. Uh, so, so there was a motion to deny. There were two ayes. So, what is Ed? Are you for or against it? The motion to deny. I'm for it. Meaning for deny. Yes. I'm for denying it. Rob? I'm against denying it. Okay. Don? I'm against denying it as well. Dick? I'm for denying it. And Keeley was for denial, so that's four to two, so the motion would pass to deny the request. And that would then mean that you could build, you could submit something to build up to 1,000 square feet, but it was denied to let you build what you're after. Okay, so come back with a survey showing something, well, survey number one, but then plans that show up to 1,000 feet. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Ed. Okay. You got to show us the bigger picture. So if you show us the picture of what it's going to look like, we're more apt to say yeah. But when you don't give us anything to look at, there's nothing we can do. Okay. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. The next applicant is uh, Ashley Sanders. Just step to the podium, please. <laughs> Hello. Let that girl get that thing right in front of your <laughs> mouth. Okay, you want to put a fence up? Correct. Well, build off an existing fence. Have you had a chance? Ash Ashley, maybe what you could do is just kind of give us a little explanation of what's there now and what you're looking to do and why you're looking to do it. Okay. So we have a, an existing fence that runs around the like from the side of our garage around the rear perimeter of the house and then it comes straight up along the house. We live on a corner lot. So then there is a very large portion of the yard that goes off by the sidewalk that is not fenced in. And what we're looking to do is build off the back property um, where the fence was and bring it up to the front corner of the house on that side lot area. As I understand it, you also do not have a survey of any kind? I can, I can comment on that. Um, would, would it be possible to get the plans on the screen, please, when you have an opportunity? Um, that way it'll be easier for everyone to see. There is a, uh, a plan that was submitted, and if you take a look, you can see um, what, where they're at on the TVs. And um, so you can see the, the garage and the house this is along 28th Street, and this is along Michigan. Uh, if you follow the arrow on the right-hand side, the yard space, you also have pictures that I presented to all of you for that address. So if you want to take a look at that, you can see the yard as well. So they're taking a look at the area along the Michigan Avenue. It's a corner lot, so that's why we're here again. Um, it's corner lot, so that's why we're here again. And... Um, so what they're taking a look at is to have the fence approximately six feet back from that property line, take it to the uh, front edge of the house, and then run that fence uh, um, east or north towards Michigan, six feet away from the front property line, and then all the way west to their rear property line along their neighbor. And you can see they have a little bit of a, a vision triangle because there's a driveway there. So they are, they're a corner lot and they're looking to utilize that space. 
and we've talked about some of the fence designs and things like this. And um, again, this is one of the ones that when we as a board have looked at these have either, either required a shadow box style fence, which I believe is what Ms. Sanders is proposing or uh, other uh, better design fences. So I don't know if that explains it for everyone. What is, uh, I guess, what is her plan of what material she's gonna be using on that fence? Okay, so um, we already have the existing fence is a six foot solid privacy fence. Um, so I, I know that that isn't allowed. Um, what we would plan on doing is using the shadow box that is the similar style to what is already there, but that it's more open. Are you willing to use vinyl? If that's necessary, yes. Okay. That do you have anything? Um, what is the recommendation by the city? Thank you. Do you have any comments, Pat? She asked a question. Keely did. I'm sorry, what? Could you repeat your question, Keely? What, what is the recommendation from the city? I think from a staff perspective, it's very similar to others we've looked at in the past. And I think as long as we had the design and the uh, vision triangle concerns addressed, we would be um, acceptable and would not object to the proposal. Even though it goes to the front of the house? It, it goes to the front of the house, but does not go any closer uh, than the front you know, it, they're still all front yard. Um, it just goes to the front most part of the house. And I believe there is 33 feet from the house to the sidewalk. Does that make sense? I'm just trying to follow the picture. So the fence, is the fence going to go... So when you're looking at the house from the front, it, are you going to look at the front of the house and it's just going to follow the line of the fence is what I'm wondering. Or is that going to be back? So, so what it's going to do is when you're looking at it from 28th Street and you're staring at the front of the house, to the right hand side is the street yard that we're talking about and it will be either equal or just step back a little bit from that corner uh, from that it would be the northwest corner of the home so you would see some fence in line oh. along Michigan Avenue and, I mean sorry along 28th okay. Street if that okay. makes does that make sense um, yep does anybody else have questions? Or I'd make a motion. Looks like you can make a motion. Okay, so in these situations, I'm just gonna explain a little bit to the owner that when you're dealing with a major road, we are requiring people to put up a vinyl fence. So if you're willing to do that, I would make a motion that uh, it would be approved based on you using vinyl fence material only. Okay, then I guess my question would be, is that for just this addition or are you asking me to replace my entire fence with vinyl? The addition is fine. Okay, okay. As long as it, you see it from the front or you see it from the front or the side of your house, even the portion of the back of your house, if you're seeing it from the road, it needs to be vinyl. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. the the motion is made to approve, provided this fence is a vinyl fence design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there so a second to a motion? There is no second, so it doesn't. There is no second, so the motion failed. So, if someone else would like to. Do a motion. I would make a motion to approve it That's as what we've done on every road. presented with the shadow box stipulation as is I'll second the it. code. So the but the, on the other fences, guys, we've done when it's on a major road, Superior, Geely. I can name every single road that we've approved it, and they're vinyl. You indicate 
that that is a policy and it is not, and this is also not a major road. But Michigan Avenue is. So uh, there's been a so there's been a motion and a second to approve as shadow box. So I guess if you want, would you like me to go through and call the roll? Would you like me to call the roll? No, we'll call the Ed, Ed? I approve. Don? I approve. Rob? Approve. Don? Yes, to approve. And Keeley? No. The motion passes with the condition uh, that it can be a shadow box. Okay. So thank you. All right, thank you. Next up to bat is uh, De La Cruz. You want to put some cement on that alley in the back there? Yes, I heard you were back there already. Marcelo De La Cruz, my wife is Meralda De La Cruz, and yes, we're asking for a variance um, going up to the property line since there is uh, already an addition in the back alley from my neighbor, I would like to just butt up my concrete slab up to hers, since again, it's uh, right on the property line. I did get a email from her that she is not objecting to this, that what I'm planning to do, if you would like for me to present it. This is hers. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Anything else? Steve, do you have anything? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, with regards to this, um, uh, you know, the th oftentimes the three feet is kept there from the standpoint of having places to put snow and different things like that. Uh, we've tried to keep uh, accessory buildings and pavement, uh, especially when there's an opportunity to maintain that three foot setback. So staff was objecting to the request because it doesn't appear there's a hardship to maintain it and that there's plenty of area in the yard to pave with maintaining that three foot setback. Can I have a motion to, is there any more, Ed, do you have any questions? Um, the gentleman did submit an uh, email, as he said, uh, from Kathy Jungbluth, I believe, owner of 2326 South 9th Street, and they have no objection to allowing a concrete slab to be poured next door to butt up to their existing slab. So just so everyone's aware. As I understand it, the neighbor to the north, he's got a slab out to the alley. You want to extend to the south, all the way from the alley, how many feet into your lot are you going, taking us? I am, depends how far. I would not like the cars to be too close to the edge of the alley. So I was thinking more up to where her shed ends. Um, about 20, yeah, that is my backyard. And um, 20, Five feet from the edge of the alley because that is my trailer so my trailer is on an existing slab that's on my property basically just cut it across and for snow removal I don't see that as an issue because I would just throw it onto my yard it won't have to go to the sides as a gentleman had indicated so snow removal is not going to be an issue for me just throw it right in back of my yard. I don't have to throw it to the sides. I don't know if that was something that was a concern. And right now you have some friendly neighbor that's plowing out the alley, is that correct? Correct, I do not know who that would be. I would like to know just for Maybe gratitude. you really wouldn't want to know. Yes, I would like to know just again, just for appreciation and gratitude for that gentleman that cleans or Whoever cleans it, I, again, we just moved in in October. It was surprising to me that somebody had cleared that alley because I did not know who that would be. But I would like to know that. But again, I mean, that would be some other 
Um, you know, the, the, the only other uh, comment I would make is if the board considers approving this, um, you know, we can't just allow it to just go to that other that other line because I don't know where the property line is. So, so if if this Talking is approved, the neighbor to the north. Yes, um, if this gets approved, it should be limited to this gentleman's property because I don't have any idea. And like the drawing says, um, I don't know where the property line begins, so I don't know either. There was a some sort of a crude line shown by satellite with green lines. Um, I understand yeah. that that is not the actual property right. line. I understand that, but right. that's Any, what I was going by. And again, if I, and I do understand the three feet, the three foot roll, fine. I just don't want an eyesore of a, like I had put in my a previous statements. I wouldn't want that eyesore to have a three foot grass strip section that I would have to take care of. I think a lot of times that gets put in there too because when people put up fences and things like that and your passenger tries to get out of the door and they can't get out because they're opening the door against the fence, that's why that three foot is in there as well. So what you're suggesting, uh, Steve, is that he's three feet from that north lot line? I'm suggesting that variance gets denied and he maintains the three foot setback. Do I hear a motion? Rob? Oop. Sorry, Rob. Well, as I understand it, as we look at these drawings, your expectation is that your neighbor's concrete goes to the property line, but if it doesn't, then you're still going to end up with a sliver of grass because you can't go over hers to her concrete that Correct. doesn't go to the concrete. Um, so based on that, I think a three foot strip makes more sense. Unless I would come back with the actual survey of the property line, which I did not do because uh, I don't think it was recommended, but I could do that. I could get a survey and find out exactly where the property line is. You know, that's something that the gentleman could do. I guess it all comes down to whether or not you're going to approve the three foot, uh, the, the setback, because if you're, getting, if you're not going to approve the variance, it may not worth be, be the, worth the time and energy other than to know where that property line is. I mean, it's always good to know, but just so everyone's aware of that. Ed, you got any comments? Don? Could a different material be used in that three feet section instead of grass? Typically, typically what you're looking at is either some, it, it it's either has to be a paved surface or uh, landscaping. So I guess if you wanted to do say some type of hedge or something to that effect, um, that would be, you know, allowed any, anything that you had in mind or were thinking. Does that Sorry, answer your question, Kelly? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I would make a motion to deny the request. I think he messes up his opportunity to put a garage in in the future, which I would expect he will want to if he does the concrete as he requests. That would be another, that would be correct. I would, again, I just moved there in October, so I already got a citation for parking on my grass. So that's a come I need to do this before <clears throat> winter comes along because I need to park my vehicles on a pavement. So again, I mean, it's just gonna, yeah, I just need that slab. And I would like to do it as soon as I can. I could have gone just get an approved, I mean, just a permit and start it. But again, I would like to see if maybe you guys would give me the chance just to extend it. But again, it's up to the city, whatever they want to. And, and there's no problem. Even if this was to get denied, there's still no problem in terms of getting a permit. You just would need to remain three feet off the property. Well, line. that's the thing. Right. I mean, but again, it's my eyesore that I got to look at. Yeah, I think 
you know, with a lot of the green space and things like that, like I said, there's reasons for fences, there's reasons for snow, there's lots of reasons. And so that uh, you have a motion and, a, uh, you know, I didn't hear a second. Is there a second to Rob's motion or no, Don? Do you second it? Is there any more discussion on it? I'll call a question. Ed? Aye. Don? I'm in favor. To deny? To deny. That's what the motion is. Yep, yep. Rob? Yes to deny. Don? Yes to deny. And Keeley? Yes to deny. Okay. So sorry, sorry, I was denied. Okay. So the ball's in your court if you got a survey and come on back. I don't to. know if a survey is going to help you. <laughs> well, I'm the one that has to live back there, so yeah, I'm going to have to at least challenge. Yeah, your, I mean, if you, want, if you want to submit a survey and come back again, you certainly can do that, but I don't know that the answer is going to change, but you can get a building permit and build off that, you know, a slab with that three foot setback. Well, I will still need to get a survey to know exactly where my three, where my three foot would Correct. begin. Correct. So regardless, I'm still going to need a survey, correct? Right. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's go to that last one. Last but not least, Mr. Reinbold. Looking to put an addition on to my garage on the north side of my uh, property. Um, do you have a survey, Mr. Reinbold? I don't have a survey. Do we, Matt? Matt's my builder. A flat survey that look at, I yeah. got from the city of Sheboygan. On it's in the packet, I think. Yeah. You'll find it in there. It in the no. That'll be brought up shortly. No. So, so it's on the screen for everyone. you want to make it a three-car garage at this point, is that what you're trying to do? Come again? You want to make it a three-car garage? Three-car garage, but it'll go back. If you look at some of the photos as well, on the north uh, side of the um, properties where we would add the garage and would go west, roof lines would maintain... Um, It'd be a little bit set back, so you'd have the current garage that's there. I think it's 22 by 22, and then um, it'd be set back just a little bit and then go down the, the side of the house from there. Do you have a picture of what it would look like when it's finished? I do have some plans here. Um, okay. uh, Keely, um, we don't have anything that's small enough to get into the packets, but there are some plans that are going around. Um, and I would imagine the gentleman or his contractor could speak to how this is trying to blend in into the house, what they're trying to accomplish in terms of design materials, things of that. So I'm sure they can speak to that, but there are, there is a set of plans here that does show how it is blending into the home. And this is attached. Okay. And what's the address of the property? Where is it located? Uh, 4432 Idle Wild Lane, which is kind of uh, okay. by the dog park, South 18th, Weedon Creek in that area. The one thing I would mention, yep. you, know, you know, similar to the last one that we spoke about is, you know, the maximum size, again, of our garages are 1,000 square feet. Um, in this particular case, we're looking at 1,300 square feet. Um, I'm assuming based on the drawing that it says 28 feet and the garage addition is 18, 18 wide that it's going to be a 10-foot setback. Um, they would have to have a minimum of that on that side. Or no, they could get that down to five, couldn't they? Because they have enough on the other side. So, so from a setback perspective, um, they should be good. So it, it all comes down to, once again, how it looks and the fact that the maximum square footage is that 1,000 square feet, which is definitely a four-car garage. So I don't know, sir, if you have anything else you guys would like to add with regards to Yeah, that. I think in the packet you'll see the things that I would be putting in there. Um, boat possibly up to, I always have at least two cars, possibly three, but there's boat, this trailer, everything else you'd normally have in a garage, even some things that aren't in there that are, you know, stored other places, but, um, but the main thing is that we want the home to maintain its appearance, so it doesn't look like it's added on, and I think if you look at the drawings that you have there, it all blends in well and won't be nice for it, and the things that I've currently stored outside would be inside the garage then at that point. 
Yeah, Keely, just so you know, from a design perspective, it, it appears that they've done a nice job. Great. Uh, the, the only uh, staff isn't totally objecting to this one. It just comes down to the thousand square feet. They've done a nice job from a design perspective. It is a little bit bigger of a lot. Um, it is meeting the setbacks, so. Uh, with the addition that you put on, how many, do you know how many feet you'd have to the north lot line? You gotta have a total of 15 feet on a setbacks, right? Uh, you have to have a total of 15 feet. So it's 10 uh, and five. What is that, 20? I think it's 20. Yeah, 10, 10 feet on the garage side, and I think it's 20 something feet on the other side. So you got plenty of side yard setbacks. That's correct. I make a motion to approve. I second it. Should we call a roll? Uh, call a question. Anybody else got any comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Oppose? Aye. Keely, you're going along with it? Yes. Oh, it's five votes. For, yes. Yep. It's approved. Congratulations. Good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Motion to adjourn. Is there any other business? Yeah. Uh, no. No other business. Maybe a motion to adjourn. We got another meeting coming up right afterwards. So if we can move on out so they can get in. To approve, to dismiss. Uh -oh. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Keely.